beautiful. Just beautiful. Did you know that there's dormant moon bacteria in all of us? And when the moon is full like that, your testosterone activates to alien levels. <gasps> wow, that's amazing. I know, right? <sighs> I'm so glad you're mentoring me, Dr. BS. It's really an honor. You got it, boy. Just give me all your money. God, that's so stupid. <laughs> but did you know that there's actually some truth to that? It seems that men have subtle hormonal cycles as well, and they are related to the 28-day moon cycle. And there are other small things that influence testosterone. For example, eating spicy food. Having a more manly posture, with your chest sticking out, also increases testosterone levels instantly. Ah, winning or losing in a game also affects testosterone levels. Apparently, when Italy lost the World Cup final to Brazil in 1994, tests on Italian fans showed that their testosterone levels fell 25% that evening. But one of the biggest mistakes you can do when gathering information is to not put it in context. When you begin to study any subject, all pieces of information seem to be of equal importance. For example, eating spicy food may seem as important as getting enough sleep. That's the problem with finding things like these online or in magazines. 10 things you can do right now to naturally increase testosterone. Are these the best 10 things or just any 10 things? I don't want you to waste your time with pebbles without having the big rocks in place first. This is why in the first three episodes of the series, we cover the basics. Why you should avoid hormone replacement therapy, how to eat and how to train to optimize testosterone. Doing those basics will matter more than everything else combined. That being said, you can take it one step further. So in this episode, we'll discuss the most important 10 things you can do on top of the basics. Uh, Radu? Why are you reading a Vogue magazine in a testosterone video? Uh, uh, it was the only one the store had? Sure, I'll believe that. So let's get started. Point number one, sleep deep and a lot. Research shows that both the quantity and quality of sleep that you get drastically affect testosterone levels. One study showed that sleeping only five hours a night for a week decreased testosterone levels by 15%. In a different study, the men who slept about 4 hours a night had an average of 250 NGDL testosterone levels, whereas the guy who slept for 8 hours had levels closer to 600 NGDL. How much you sleep in total matters, but sleep quality is very important as well. Ideally, you'd sleep in your bed in a dark, quiet and cool room. Falling asleep in front of your computer on the couch doesn't count as quality rest time. Now, number two, be in the range of about 8 to 14% body fat and have some muscle mass. In research, body fat is usually inversely correlated with testosterone. The reason for that is probably because increased fat mass leads to an increased aromatase enzyme activity, which in turn leads to more testosterone being converted to estrogen. So in retrospect, the leaner you are, the more likely you're going to have higher testosterone levels. Increased amount of muscle mass also positively correlates with serum testosterone levels. So if you burn the fat and build the muscle, you'll not only look shredded, but you can improve your hormonal health too. Becoming more relaxed, more serene, reduces cortisol levels, the stress hormone. And that's good, because cortisol is indirectly correlated with testosterone. Cortisol is made from the same raw material as testosterone is, pregnenolone. High levels of cortisol can literally destroy your free testosterone molecules inside the testicles and in the bloodstream. I know this is easier said than done, but becoming more relaxed, letting go of stressors in your life is one of the best things that you can do for your hormones and for your health in general. It's not fully understood, but more sexual activity leads to higher testosterone. It is theorized that it's an interplay with dominance, feeling of power, feeling of success, pheromones, dopamine, and interpersonal touch. And the most telling study on this is the Baltimore Longitudinal Study on Aging. It was done on men over 60 years of age, and those with higher level of sexual activity had significantly greater serum testosterone levels. It's also been seen in couples that on the nights that there is sexual activity, testosterone levels are significantly higher than on the nights that they don't have sex. 
Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's it. Oh, what you doing, Victoria? Come on. There seems to be this common misbelief that masturbation somehow drains testosterone from your body. That's not true. However, busting a nut doesn't produce the same increase in testosterone as sex does. A study of 44 men visiting a sex club showed that the guys who went there only to watch other people have sex had an average increase of 11% in their testosterone levels, whereas the guys who went there and actually had sex noted an average increase of 72%. It's well documented that chronic alcoholics tend to have significantly lower levels of testosterone and significantly higher estrogen levels than their non-alcoholic peers. This is because alcohol increases the activity of the enzyme aromatase which converts testosterone to estrogen, increases oxidative stress in the body and increases the release of the hormone prolactin. Luckily though, it's all dose dependent. Low alcohol consumption isn't that bad for male hormone production. In one study, two glasses of red wine produce a decrease in testosterone of only 7%. So if your goal is to really optimize your testosterone production, you should reduce the frequency and the amount of alcohol that you drink, but you don't have to give it up entirely. Some synthetic chemicals or natural substances can alter the functioning of the endocrine system. Unfortunately, some of these chemicals are used generously in modern personal care items, plastics, preservatives, pesticides, and many, many other appliances. Out of the thousands of substances out there, most are relatively harmless. But there are some compounds that have been proven to interfere with hormone production. Here are the most common substances that do that. We highly recommend that you check the labels of the products you use regularly to make sure you're avoiding these substances. The products you can commonly find them in are plastic containers and cookware, canned food, cosmetics and personal care items, soaps, lotions and hand sanitizers. It's pretty much impossible to avoid exposure completely in the modern world, but you can slash your exposure significantly by using a tap water filter, drinking from steel or glass cups and bottles, using natural personal care items, and eating less canned foods. Grocery store receipts are also coated with BPA, so it's best to not fiddle around with them too much. Roughly 95% of the testosterone in your body is produced inside the Leydig cells of the testicles. For optimal testosterone production, your testicles actually need to be a bit cool, which is why they hang on a, in the scrotum and on a pouch on the outside of your body. What you can do to improve their functioning is to sleep naked, wear loose boxers, and take frequent cold showers. Now, these can have a uh, positive impact on your testosterone production. Aside from lifting weights and doing cardio or walking, doing some other type of physical activity on a regular basis can increase the levels. This includes things like hiking, mowing the lawn, playing sports, and other sorts of recreational stuff. Studies show that when sedentary subjects are compared against active subjects, the more physically active guys have higher sperm counts and testosterone levels. For example, in Simone Tribesman, one hour of chopping trees led to a 46.8 increase in testosterone. This is something that everyone knows they should do, but hardly ever does. It's been shown in studies that even a mild 2% dehydration can significantly raise cortisol levels and lower growth hormone secretion. Now thirst is actually a sign of dehydration, not a signal to drink water. So if you get thirsty, you're already likely behind on your water intake. Aim to drink enough water to have five clear urinations a day. A few interesting studies have shown that after a short-term fast, your androgen receptors become more sensitive towards testosterone than what they would be if you'd eat on a constant basis. Interestingly enough, even after a 10-day water fast, refeeding increased testosterone levels above the previous baseline. The form of intermittent fasting I recommend is simply skipping breakfast and eating 4-6 to six hours after waking up. This way, you spend 15-18 to 18 hours fasted and you get all your calories in the second part of the day. Hey, it's Radu again, thanks for watching this video. All the 10 things that we covered in this video are addressed in much greater detail in the ebook 52 Ways to Naturally Increase Testosterone. Click on it to get it for free. To check out Chris's complete program for T-Optimization, click on Test Shack. And for more videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to both of our channels.